Okay, so we are going to uh, kind of pick up where we left off. Um, and the only thing that, so next, next day, we left off yesterday, so I'm just kind of opening the code from where I left it off yesterday. Um, I had one typo yesterday, that uh, at least one typo that I've found. Um, and so if you're literally following line by line with me, um, I had this validate class that was some static methods in there. And here I'm reading something out of a database. In this case, I'm reading an employee out of the database where there's, you know, matching fields, first name, last name, and date of birth. And I, on line 10, I was checking the wrong employee object. And so I needed to update line 10 to check for that DB employee as opposed to the employee object that was passed into that method. And that kind of, uh, fixed a bug that I was having at the end of yesterday if you were paying close attention you saw that bug where it was like it didn't matter what year I was putting in for chip gains it was coming back like he already existed and that's because this if statement was um, improperly configured and so let me open up the requirements and kind of see where we're at so I pulled up the requirements and we checked off all this yesterday, so we're kind of down here. Um, valid data for a new sales amount, quarter, year, and amount, and employee are required. So let's kind of pull that up. And so under our models, let me close everything, close all tabs. Sales, required, required, required. <clears throat> now this employee ID. some validation in there but I'm not going to put the required attribute on it um, so we got the required fields there so quarter must be between one and four so there we go we got a range validator on that built in that's nice and easy year must be after 2000 um, so we wrote this yesterday greater than 2000 so that's a greater than attribute kind of open that up you can see when you send an int in, it does one thing, but if you send in a date time object, it does something else. So obviously this would send in the int. And the 2000 would come in as under the constructor. And then the value comes in from the form. So there's two things that they're comparing. One compare value and one uh, what they call the int to check value. So that's your if statement. Um, so that's greater than 2,000 on the year. <clears throat> uh, amount must be greater than zero. It's actually going pretty fast. So amount must be greater than zero. So let's look at the amount. Again, it's a greater than. Now the amount is a double. And if you go back to greater than, notice we're now checking for doubles. We're checking for ints and we're checking for date times. So we need another data type because uh, that value is going to be coming from the form and that, that'll be a double. Um, and so we need to kind of expand this method uh, to, to take in some doubles. And so 
uh, greater than attribute. Go ahead and open that up and we'll make a change there. Um, let's do else if value is double and I don't think uh, it's, the logic's going to be just basically about the same. Uh, double to check. We'll cast in the value variable. And then we say double, double to compare. And we're casting the compare value, which is the field. The same logic as the int, just a double instead. If double to check is greater than double to compare, return success. Now we can kind of go back here. Now that we have a double, we could say greater than. Zero point zero. Now the employee ID, um, actually let's just spin it up and see some of these. Uh, let's start with amount must be greater than zero. Oh, well we're not going to be able to spin it up because we don't have our controllers or our views or any of that fun stuff. <coughs> um, so where to go? I suppose let's make the controller for sales. Um, and then we'll just make a view and we'll just build it out slowly. So let's add a sales controller. Add controller. adding sales so http get say what employee made the sale so let's load up view bag employees and in order to get all of our employees from the database um, let's bring in our context okay so bring in our context and now we can hit our database database employees Let's order by last name, and these are E. So we'll see E dot last name to list return to the view. So that'll at least get our view bag populated with our data. 
<clears throat> and then inside of views, let's add a folder called sales. Add a view called add. lowercase m at the top. <coughs> now we just got to add this to our nav bar to call that action method and that controller so inside of layout got our nav items so here's our nav item here's our nav item there's that employee. Let's just copy, <coughs> paste. go there we go there we go back to here add sales now we bring in our form to do a post we're going to have a method of post we have to code in our controller Class of form control. Okay, so we're going to have a quarter and then a year. So I'm going to copy this div and paste, change the words quarter to year, year, year. Again, after year, after year goes amount, 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 then we have a drop down list 
of employees that come from our view bag. And I think if I'm trying to add an employee, we had this already from view bag. And so I'm going to copy this div. There's going to be a slight change or two, but I'm going to copy out of the add employee and paste that into the add sales. And obviously there is no manager ID here. Instead, this is employee ID. submit button which is just going to be the same div class of row call submit add I'm going to copy that submit button from my add employee into my add sale value of zero is the first option. So we're going to make sure that the employee ID is greater than zero because this default option of zero uh, needs to be something greater than zero, right? That was the requirement on the lab. Make sure employee is mandatory. Um, so anyways, back to add sales. I don't have anything posting yet, right? So this add button obviously isn't going to work because we haven't posted anything. <clears throat> Back to the controller. But we've got the markup pretty well configured. Um, Back to the sales controller. Let's post a sale. So we send the sale into the database if it's valid. We save changes. Add a variable to temp data. And redirect. of the home controller. Else, um, we put the employees back in the view bag. Literally, you could copy this line, paste it, and return Actually, we don't, we just return to the same. <clears throat> add method, bless you. So that should return us to the same get method of uh, where we came from. You have any? Uh, can you explain line number 30, why you have to uh, declare the view bag again? Put the employee back in the view bag? Well, you're kind of re-rendering the view. So you're re... That, that else statement is that there's the data is invalid, right? 
Correct. Yeah, so so it's going to go from the view to the controller. Ultimately, the controller is going to have to re-render the view, and it's going to have to have view bags. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to fill in the data from your drop-down. Um, Yeah, and, and, and if if you kind of like, hey, hmm, you know, well, first off, let's test that this works with invalid data, and then let's give it some invalid data, and let's not load up the view bag, right? So that's how you would test that. <clears throat> okay, so this is all kind of working, the value blank is invalid, please enter a quarter, um, but obviously we still have, after the invalid, after the post, we still have the employees there. Let's take that out. Do a post, because again, you're, you know, the flow of operations, if you will, go from controller to view. The view says, hey, I need the view back. And so that's just sent one time. Um, now we do have some validation to clean up because it's, it is working, but that's probably not what we would expect, right? These kind of different Please enter a quarter. Okay, that's right. The field, you know, the value blank is invalid. Okay, well, it's required, but I would expect that. Uh, that might be a typo on my end. Does that say that on yours? No. Yeah, I think that's a typo on my end. Please enter an amount. That's what I would expect, and we need to validate that. So let me look at my year attribute on my sale. Keep in mind when you change this, so this is changing our database design, right? So realize that if we're changing the data type of int to a nullable int, that that should be reflected in the database. Um, and we can do that by adding migration and, and updating the database. Um, Yeah, it was it was validating, but it wasn't giving me the message that you would expect. So whenever I add that question mark to make it nullable, underneath my index.html or the uh, you know, home page, the quarter of the sales, uh, it messes up my two strings and it says that like because it's nullable, it, it can't render that. It's weird. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I didn't have to. I put it there. So I'm just going to, um, because I changed this year property to a nullable int instead of um, a regular int, I'm going to go back to my pan package manager console. I'm going to say add migration nullable year. And 
It did not. Okay. It did not change my database design. If it did, you would see some code in here. Now, so I'm going to delete that because let's see, undo this action, remove migration. So that'll get rid of that. Okay. And I just want to look at my database design. Quarterly sales, tables, sales, view designer. Does not allow no. So picking back up with the requirements, quarter year amount and employee are required. So let's, let's add that employee being a required thing. Um, so on the employee ID, because that's what we're validating, we need to validate employee ID. We're going to use that greater than. zero and the error message please select an employee and so now if I boot that up I'm just saying you would expect to use the required attribute there but I guess that makes sense since you're saying Yeah, I'm not sure the required wouldn't work. I, I agree. It like makes sense. Um, add sales. Oh, I need to restart it. Add sales. Add please select an employee. Let's do that. Display name employee. Okay. Um, back to the requirements. We now have that quarter between one and four, year after 2000, amount greater than zero. Lastly, new sales must not have the same quarter year and employee as sales data that's already in the database. Hey, we did that a couple times yesterday. So we've got all those classes wired up. Um, so let's do one more for the practice of it. Um, so I'm going to go into my validate static class write a method called check sales sales context and a sales object called s1 Checking for the quarter year and employee ID.
interesting. If I say sales DB sale, I get this nasty. It might be null. So I guess you could do this sales. Okay. If DB sale is null. So this is either returning empty string for good or error message string for bad. Now that we have that written, keep in mind ultimately our attribute that we're going to decorate our model with is going to look inside this validation controller. And this validation controller has the methods that ultimately um, that attribute works with. We just happen to call um, those static methods from within here. Okay, so. This is the next place we need to write a little bit of code is inside this validation controller. We'll decorate the quarter attribute here. We'll also pass in the year and employee ID. So build up a sales object with the data that's passed in, send that into our method, that method returns a string if that string is null or empty, then we're good. We 
which in this case we just return true to represent no errors. Else we return JSON with our error message. Uh, don't forget the keyword return to make the compiler happy. Now I'm seeing something that may be going to add to some confusion because I know Josh you were asking about this yesterday um, in particular like these are coming in from the model right and so we've got quarter year and employee ID and we were saying like mm, what happens first and what happens next so the way that I have this coded and bear with me on this um, under sales so let's go to our sales model right yesterday that's what we were doing and and maybe we maybe we can and should do that but I actually have this elsewhere I have it on employee ID and so this is just making me think that the names have to match regardless of case right so we've got three fields employee ID quarter and year right and so as long as those names match quarter, year, and employee ID, as long as those match the properties, um, is what the convention must be. So the method is check sales inside of the validation controller, and the additional fields besides the employee ID are quarter and year. I was making an assumption yesterday that order mattered, but the way this is coded um, clearly is not in any sort of order. The, the, the first property based on what we were doing yesterday would be employee ID. And that is not on our validation controller. That is not what's coming in first. That's coming in third. Um, so Let me now, one more last step, right? So we added the method here in the static class. We added the method in the validation controller. Um, now we have to go back to the sales controller. Uh, sales controller and change this model state if the error exists. Now validate dot, and it's not happy. And so yesterday we have to add, add a using statement. Employee dot model dot validation. Yep. Yeah, I was able to do that yesterday. I said validate and then tab right there and it brought in the using statement for me. So let me undo that. This is what I was doing yesterday. I just typed in the word validate and there it sees the namespace, right? And I hit tab and it brought in the using for me. Check sales. Passing in context and the 
sale object. And if it's not null or empty, model state goes bad. Model state, add model error. of the employee ID property which would you know the name comes back as employee and then along with the message um, so that should be the last step in the process and let's boot it up and see what breaks Uh, so 2022 quarter one, 2022 quarter one chip is already registered. Uh, so let's add a sale. Quarter one, 2022 chip. All right. Now if I change that, all right. You want to test it? Because it's, yeah. it's checking the database. Yeah, it yeah, should be. So the question is, if we look at our sales, view data for our sales, and this was the one, two, three. So let's let's just delete that record. Um, yeah, we need we need. Uh, let's just delete. How about that? You're about to delete a row. Okay. So now if I boot that back up, the sale of one, two, three is not there. And I said quarter two, right? So let's add quarter two of 2020. There you go. Yep. Do you guys want to grab that first break? Sure. See you when you get back. Okay, to close out this lab, there's one piece left, which is this bullet right here. The web app should include jQuery validation libraries, so validation happens on the client. Also on the server, to keep things simple, you can make your custom validation attributes only on the server, thus it will they will fire after client-side validation has passed. Well, that's actually not too hard. So we, if I close it all down, close all tabs, um, bring all these folders. In our views, we've got to add employee and we've got an add sales. And if I kind of open up the layout, you can see by default there's a section down here at the bottom of the body. The section is called scripts. And so on these two pages, we're going to add jQuery scripts um, to do some client side validation. And once we type it once, we'll copy and paste it into the other one. So after, again, it doesn't really matter which one you do first here. Uh, we're going to add to script source and the lib, lib jQuery validation dist jQuery validate minified. lib on a 
intrusive minified and that's basically what we need to finish this up copy and paste that into the other page and test it out and you'll notice now it's a two-part validation process again it's not perfect in the sense that you could say it's annoying but if I go to add an employee it shouldn't do a post you see that it didn't it didn't do a round trip to the server it stayed on the client side and because it's fast it's jQuery and as soon as I start typing in my validation is happy and then even if I enter an invalid date like we know we've got some server side for tomorrow that's gonna be server side validation right that's gonna catch that and if I say the hire date was in 94 and manager now I click add this should be caught by the server side validation right so it is doing both client and server and a date that's in the past of course And then can't be before 95 an employee Evan added now if I go to add sales we can add a sale for Evan Well, this is the client side. Oh, right? so it won't check. So it won't check it until it hits that server side. Okay. Yeah. So if we say two, 1998, 3000, now we click add. Got that server side. And there we go. I didn't you wanted to see the layout. Yeah, the layout. Basically, so I didn't touch. Those scripts that you're putting. Uh huh. Um, can those like I have mine in the head? Is that okay? That's in the header instead of the footer. Yeah. Keep in mind, it's traditional JavaScript. You want to put all your external JavaScript links in the footer, mm -hmm. even though we were doing the async await stuff. But, but, yeah, it, they'll work in the head. In many cases. There are some benefits to putting them in at the bottom. Yeah. Can I see the the ad for the second script? I was only able to type out one. Sure, go for it. All right, I'm going to stop that recording there. If you guys need to see anything else, let me know.